gonna be fun. Our guest, one of the best fighters in the world. Stephen A, you love a good resume. How about this? 20 wins in his impressive, impressive. career. 15 by KO. We now welcome the UFC heavyweight champ, Stipe Miocic. Stipe, thank you so much for being with us. All right, thanks for having me. Of course, I like the frames. All right, let's start with UFC 260 this weekend. We're all fired up. You face Francis and Ganu in the main event, a rematch for that heavyweight belt. Stipe, last time it took five rounds. How many rounds this time? You know, I don't know. Um, you know, the sooner the better. Um, come out on skate is always nice. Um, but I'm playing for a war. You know, always, always ready for five rounds, no matter what. That's what I train for. And you know, if it ends early, even better. But you know. I'm going to hit that win no matter what. Steve, thank you for being on the show. This guy, it, it, the last eight wins he has is by knockout. The last four is first-round knockouts. Uh, coming into this fight, is that potentially something that you believe can work to your advantage, the fact that this guy has taken everybody out in his last, last three years inside of two minutes, and maybe, just maybe, that could work to your advantage as well? Are you looking at it from that standpoint, sir? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean... It, it, Maybe, I don't know, maybe he feels like he knocked me off quick, um, good, and then, you know, and then he realizes he can't, uh, you know, get some frustrated. So, you know, I don't know. Um, we're not going to worry about what he's going to do. I'm going to worry about what I do and, you know, implement, implement my game plan and uh, get that W. Champ, are you surprised that you're the underdog in this fight? You win the first fight. You, you worked him over pretty good. Um, you were able to withstand his early shots, and you got him on the ground a bunch of times, and you beat him up pretty well. It seemed like his confidence was shot in his next fight against Lewis. He didn't do anything. Yeah, and now yeah. he went back to doing what he's always done, which is knock everyone out early. Meantime, you win a trilogy against one of the best who ever did it and come into the rematch of a fight you won the first time dominant in dominant form as an underdog. Do you have any thoughts about that? No, I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm used to it. Uh, Vegas hates me. Uh, so let's keep it at that. I mean, uh, I don't mind being an underdog. I like shutting people up. Um, so I just, you know, nothing new, honestly. Everybody points to the fact that obviously, like the you, I'm sorry, go ahead, Molly. I apologize. Go ahead, Molly. Okay, real quick, uh, Stipe, I was just going to say we all love the underdog mentality, a good underdog story, even though it doesn't feel like you are one. Uh, I know you're focused on this weekend. I know you're focused on Francis Ngannou, but, but I got to ask you this. John Bones Jones, a lot of people interested moving from lightweight to heavyweight, obviously considered to be one of the greatest of all time, obviously dealt with a lot of adversity and has taken lengths of time off. But how much would you like a shot at Bones Jones in the octagon? Oh, it would be great, but right now my focus is on Saturday, UFC 260. You know, all I care about is Francis. That's all I'm focused on, task at hand, and that's all I care about. Stipe, educate me about this. Considering the fact that you won the first fight, how you won it, by the way, you know, basically taking them to the ground and what have you, because that's what people try to do with a knockout artist. I guess what I'm wondering about, do you think that the same strategy needs to be employed, or do you think going into this fight you'll need to do something a bit different in order to beat Ngannou? No, I'm definitely going to do something different, a uh, different game plan, just because, you know, in this sport you have to evolve. If you don't evolve, uh, you're going to get passed by. And, uh, you know, he's definitely working on everything. He's working on striking, of course, but he's working on his ground game, his defense, his uh, wrestling. He's doing all that, as, as am I. So, I mean, we both evolved since our last fight. Uh, you know, he's gotten a lot better, but so have I. Champ, you know, he can work on his cardio, on his conditioning, on whatever. But to me, that's not really the issue, how much card, how much work you put in in terms of that stuff in a case of a knockout artist who has been upset because your first fight, you upset him. He was the favorite in that fight, too. It's about being able to relax. You can be as in great condition as you want, but you have to be able to relax in there, and, and that experience will, will show. I'm sure you've studied his fights in preparation for this fight. Do you think he will be able to do that? Are you anticipating a guy who's learned from his first fight with you uh, or not? Um, I think he has learned, but unfortunately he's going to fight me again and I'm going to bring it out of him again. Um, I'm not going to, you know, be, let him just do what he wants. I'm going to make him feel uncomfortable and make it the whole, the whole fight just not what he wants and just frustrate the crap out of him. Let's go back to that underdog label because you're, you're, you're a slight underdog in this fight. How are you feeling about that considering the fact that you're the reigning heavyweight champion of the world? 
Honestly, I, I love it. I mean, usually at this point, um, it seems like it's a, my storyline. <laughs> Every fight I'm the underdog. Um, so nothing new. I'm just going to go out there and just do what I do and get that win. Walk out and still. All right. Stipe, we can't wait. Thank you so much for the time. Uh, it all goes down this Saturday. Best of luck to you, UFC 260. And it's Stipe defending his title, as we just mentioned, against Francis Ngannou in the heavyweight main event. That is at 10 Eastern to order the main card in English and Spanish on pay-per-view. Go to ESPNplus.com slash pay-per-view. DraftKings is the official daily fantasy sports partner of UFC. And this Saturday, new players can play free for over $50,000 in prizes when you make your deposit. Download the DraftKings app and sign up with promo code OCTAGON for your shot at $50,000 in prizes. Only on DraftKings. Bells, let's talk a little NFL. The Patriots have certainly bolstered their roster, going all in on free agency. Bill Belichick not playing around. Take a look at the moves here. And they improved their passing game by signing Kendrick Bourne. And here he is on what he expects with New England. I think he's going to ball out, you know, with the weapons they brought in, the, the help now. And, you know, it was just one of those rebuilding years that they went through and stuff like that. And he was a part of it. So people may say he not looked as good. He, he looked bad or whatever it may be. But. Now he has some help, and, and they know what they're putting around him, which is awesome. So I just want to be a part of, you know, five touchdowns, ten touchdowns for me and change the narrative. Cam's team changed the narrative. Oh, look who decided to show back up for a good time. Marcus <laughs> Spears, bald and beautiful, coming around causing trouble. Uh, Marcus, you know the drill. The, fe the fellas first, and then and then you get to educate the people and talk some sense into them. Um, Stephen A., do you believe Bourne's comments on Cam and the Patriots? No, I don't. No, I don't. Sorry to say. Um, I got a lot of love for Cam, and I think that he's an exceptional athlete. Um, but I think that particularly in this day and age, you, you know, you're, you're young and spry like the Lamar Jacksons, the Patrick Mahomes, the Deshaun Watsons of the world and others. You can run with the football, even the Josh Allen's of the world. You can run with the football. Uh, and when you're Cam's age, not that he's 40 or anything like that. I think he's only like 31, 32 years of age. But he's been hit a lot. Uh, age and attrition is kicked in, and I don't think that you know you can't have him run. You can't have him running the football, but so much. And then we get to his passing ability. I will remind everybody that Cam Newton has had. Um, he's been in the league in the National Football League for 10 years. He's completed better than 60% of his passes four times. One of those times was last year, where he completed 65% of his passes, but still threw eight touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Uh, and obviously, we need to look to COVID and some of the things that may have come into play that may have affected him physically. Fair enough. I have no issue with that. What I do have an issue with is watching him throw the football for the vast majority of his career. I've never considered him an elite, accurate passer. And so when I think about the New England Patriots being successful next season, I think it's going to be because of their defense and their ability to run the football. I don't think it's because they're going to be able to air it out with Cam Newton behind center. I just don't view it that way because I've never viewed him in that, in that manner. I think he can play. I think he's a winner. I think he finds a way to get things done. But when it comes to specifically throwing the football, that is where I've always been suspect about Cam Newton. And I've seen nothing, absolutely nothing, to change my mind in that regard. Um, well, ball out doesn't mean just throwing the football. <coughs> and a whole generation of guys now playing in the league, because Cam has been around for a minute already, have idolized Cam. Other athletes watched Cam come up and was like, whoa, this dude, when he was the MVP of the league, when he was selected by his peers as the best player in the game, while Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, and everyone was in their primes. They were all in their primes. Cam was number one, took his team to the Super Bowl. These guys like to play with him. You know, game recognize game, real recognize real. And they're, they're bringing in some ballers on the Patriots who are like, yep, I want to play with this guy. It's not just about throwing the football, although it can also be that with Cam, with North Turner, when last seen healthy before this last disastrous COVID year, right? He was having his best passing year, even better than his MVP season. 
So bowl out can just mean lead your team to victory by making plays, by being a leader. Don't forget, they were so bereft of weapons, as you put, Stephen A., they made Tom Brady look ordinary a couple of years ago. He just threw 40 touchdowns, won the Super Bowl when he got out of there. So now they're bringing in weapons to a team. I'll go through my greatest hits, volume five right now on this. Coming off a catastrophic injury, missing a year, new system opposite to the one that he'd been playing in, zero weapons, COVID season, so no preseason to learn his teammates. Then he got COVID. That affected him not only when he missed the week, but several weeks after that COVID fog. Practice facilities shut down, putting them farther behind the eight ball. And even then, he led that team to a number of quality wins against good teams last year and came two plays away from going nine and seven. Do I believe that that guy, now with a year under his belt, where he, where he will have practice, he will know his teammates, his teammates can play, he's, he's not coming off a catastrophic injury, do I believe that dude can ball out? Yes, I do. It determines how we define it, right? I believe Cam should be marketably better than he was last year. But I, I'm, I'm along the vein with Stephen A. Like, I, I have to see Cam throw the football a bit more effectively. And remember, 